Are Serial Killers Born or Made? On November 13, 2020, Peter Sutcliffe died unmourned in the University Hospital of North Durham after refusing treatment for COVID-19. At no time did Sutcliffe appear to show any remorse for what he had done. What made Sutcliffe and others like him the people they became? Ted Bundy, 30 murders confirmed, Pedro Rodriguez Filio, 70 murders confirmed, Luis Garavito, 138 murders of street children confirmed. Were they natural born killers all along or did something change them and make them into serial killers? Neuroscientist Jim Fallon had few doubts. Lawyers had been sending Fallon brain scans of convicted murderers in the hope that he could show there was something wrong with their brains that would perhaps get them a lighter sentence, or maybe help them escape the death penalty. After several years, Fallon was beginning to see a pattern. To test his ideas objectively, he set up a blind trial. Colleagues sent him 70 brain scans, some were of people with a diagnosis, such as schizophrenia or depression, some were from people with no diagnosis and some were from convicted killers. Fallon successfully identified all the killer brains in the sample. They all had one thing in common, says Fallon, a loss of function in the orbital cortex, above the eyes, which is the circuit that codes for ethics, morality, conscience and when that's gone or doesn't develop, not only does a person have no sense of morality but also has little control over their impulses. Fallon had arranged pet brain scans for 10 members of his own family as controls for a project he was conducting on vulnerability to Alzheimer's disease. Looking through these scans one October afternoon, he was shocked to find one that looked just like, in his words, the worst serial killer brain. There was more to come. One had all of these markers that were really high risk for violence, says Fallon. Now, it became a bit more serious, because I had both the brain pattern and the genetics that were very consistent with a really bad news killer, a psychopath really. If Fallon's research was right, and he was sure it was, then how come he wasn't a killer, a Peter Sutcliffe, a Ted Bundy, or a Luis Garavito? It suggested that while brain abnormality and genes linked with aggression and violence were necessary causes of psychopathic aggression, they weren't sufficient. There had to be something else. And for Fallon, this something else may come from childhood. Fallon's belief that his happy and secure childhood may have protected him from a bad throw of the genetic dice and let him rethink some of his long-held ideas. For Fallon, there are three necessary ingredients that, when they come together, can produce psychopathic killers. The first is a loss of function in the orbital cortex which can leave people incapable of ethical decision-making and also makes them less able to control their impulses. The second is inheriting genes, such as the Mawa gene, that predispose a person to aggression and violence. And the third, having a childhood devoid of love, affection, and care that fails to protect people from their latent psychopathology. Peter Sutcliffe, Ted Bundy, Pedro Rodriguez Filio, and Luis Garavito all had troubled or abusive childhoods. We began by asking whether there really are natural born killers. better to say that there are natural-born potential killers. Whether that awful potential is realized would seem to depend on environmental influences and, in particular, the love given, or denied, in early childhood.